Hello and welcome to this video on uh, regularization as a concept of machine learning, specifically of linear regression. So what we are often familiar with as a as an equation of linear regression, we can write it as a relationship between the dependent variable y and the independent variables, say we have x1, x2, and there is a coefficient associated with each of these independent variables going on up to, say we have about uh, p predictors, so that will be beta p, xp. And effectively, these coefficients are designed such that we are able to minimize our difference between the, or the residual, which would be the error between uh, the predicted value and the actual value. So to speak, if this is uh, our predicted value, we can say y hat, then our residual sum of squares is given by the summation i is equal to 1 to, we can say 1 to p, and uh, or 1 to n rather, we're talking about the number of observations, right? For each of these observations, we have yi, which is the actual value, minus y hat, the whole square. So this is nothing but if we re rephrase this, we can talk about this in terms of yi minus beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x two going on all these terms and uh, the square of the entire thing is summed up. Right? Square of the residual for each and every observation is summed to give us the residual sum of squares. And our objective at all points would be to try and minimize this value. Okay, The least, the lesser that we have the RSS value, the better the model is performing. <clears throat> but what tends to happen is when we are breaking down our data into training and testing sets, we are using the training set to develop this relationship. The entire relationship is developed based on the training set. And once developed, we are able to give our unseen data or the test data to this model. Okay, you can say uh, the linear regression model in order to get the predicted values. So what's happening in order to build a, a relationship in the first place, which is happening based on this, based on our training data set. The model tends to learn a little too well from the training data set which is to say all the complexities that are a part of our training data are incorporated into this linear regression model. And once you're getting in all that complexity in here, right, which is uh, nothing but R, it is expressed in terms of R coefficients, beta naught, beta one, beta 2 and so on, these coefficients are basically getting assigned to each and every independent feature and that is creating a certain amount of complexity which when we are putting some unseen data which is in the form of test data, it's not quite able to give us the same performance that we are getting with the training data which is to say the model is overfitting.
when test data does not give us a good enough performance. Right, we, we do have a pretty decent performance based on the training data. The model having learned from the training data itself, but the test data doesn't quite match that level of performance. <clears throat> That's when we talk about overfitting occurring as a phenomenon. And in order to prevent this, what we do is we reduce the coefficients that are given to this predicted value, right? So we are looking to kind of minimize these coefficients, focus more on those independent variables, which have more of an impact on the predicted value, the dependent variable, and uh, reduce the coefficients for where we did not have those kind of high coefficients, <clears throat> right? So now this is done by basically using a term uh, which is called the shrinkage penalty. Right, lambda becomes our term that contributes to the shrinkage penalty And now what we try to minimize is RSS plus lambda times square of beta g, or rather the summation of the square of beta g. Okay, there would be a summation term here for all the coefficient terms, right? So as lambda goes higher and higher, our shrinkage term is increasing, all right, which is talking about imposing a higher penalty and reducing the coefficients for our regression model, okay? So once we employ this kind of a penalty, we call the regression model as ridge regression, which is basically employing regularization to regression, and we call this particular form of uh, regularization as the L2 norm, where we are trying to use the shrinkage penalty to further reduce the complexity of the model and the contribution of certain independent features. So we would elaborate more on how this L2 norm functions particularly in relation to another type of regularization, which forms the lasso regression. More on this would follow in the next video.